Hello there and welcome to another week of energy readings and I just spilled some tea. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're looking at the week of February the 26th right through March 4th. But as you can see, I'm not on my own today. As I promised you, I think last week, um, every now and then I will have a guest. And I'm joined by the absolutely amazing numerologist, Heather James. Very welcome. <laughs> I have to say this, and I know, I'm, I know I'm, not, I'm not that known for flattery, but I need to tell you this. Earlier this year, I felt absolutely shit. <laughs> and I said to the universe, I need a reader that doesn't know me. Probably has never heard of me, kind of thing. And, and I need this reader to be very good because I want answers. And then um, I said to the universe, find me this reader now, right? In my very German stern accent. <laughs> and um, within about being on Facebook for about five minutes, your page showed up. It's that, it's, it's, that, it's that simple. And the reading I had is probably the best I've ever had. And I really oh, mean it. It was just absolutely, absolutely awesome. And I got tons of answers and more. <laughs> so I thought yeah. um, I, I better ask you if you want to be part of this. Um, and because, um, believe it or not, uh, Heather can talk as much as I do. I can see when she does these live videos once a week, she's just in there. So I thought um, it probably would be a good idea if we do a two-parter. So what we do is we look at the overall energy first and then go into the first six star signs, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer and Leo. If you are a Virgo onwards, um, I would ask you not to leave us now because we're still having to look at the overall energy, right? So, before we even look at the cards, what will happen this week, number one, we are, we, are, we are beginning March, which is the third month of the year. Three is the number of progression, so there will be lots of high energy, even if we have a, a lower energy week in the middle or something, the energy is bound to be much higher than it is in February, so that's a good thing. Then on the 2nd of March, we have a um, full moon. And that full moon is actually quite quite powerful, isn't it? It is. It's a, a, a 16-7 date. Um, so 16-7 is karmic spiritual rebirth. It also relates to the soulmate. So um, a lot of people are going to be finding their soulmates around, around this time, probably the start of March. Uh, this month is um, surrounding divine goddess energy. So try and uh, call in the divine goddesses and ask them to provide you with energy. They're going to bring bring in auspicious opportunities for you and people that are, are here to serve you along your path. And it is my birthday in March. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's bring me some gifts. <laughs> let's have a look at the overall energy for the week, February 26th to March the 4th. And as usual, I just take uh, two cards um, from one of my uh, shamanic decks and we'll see what we got. Right. Okay. What is important for all of us, because it's the overall energy, we're not in the individual star signs yet, for all of us it is important to be energetically as high as we possibly can. The color mat is, is here, and the color mat is um, a very special pipe. And what it means is you have to cleanse your, 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 your living space, and everywhere you go, probably have a pendulum, draw yourself a vortex of that energy. Try to be in as much new and fresh energy as you possibly can, and also at all times, Remember that you are a natural born leader. This is the week where you speak your truth. And remember your leader here, or our leader here, is the wolf. And the wolf is a pack animal. That means when you speak your truth, it is very unlikely that you will actually lose people. It is more likely that they will come on board because they recognize your leadership and that what you say makes a lot of sense. So this is not a week to be quiet. This is also not a week to be super loud because a, a proper leader doesn't have to be loud, it just has to be straightforward, if that makes sense. Um, as long as you realize that what you are saying um, is for the higher good and makes sense, we're all good. So that's the overall energy, and now Heather is going into some of the numbers here. Okay, so this month is a karmic 13 for a month. It means that people are going to be probably working very hard for things. It's a time of building foundations in your life this month. Uh, you may find people are letting you down a little bit lately. Um, since the start of the month. This is because you need to be clearing people away that no longer positively serve you, okay? Next month is a 14-5, which relates to karmic freedom. So for all this freedom to come in, you have to make the changes yourself and clear away all that no longer positively serves you. Okay. Okay. So let's go into the individual star signs. Uh, and we have moved into Pisces. So we're starting with my star sign. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a look what we got. Okay, 
very good actually because sometimes you can't choose it you know you, you get what you get but uh, for, for Pisces we have the beaver and the snake and the beaver is the builder of bridges and the snake is the animal of protection and health so in short we um, the, the job for Pisces this week is to hold on to people that um, are friends and loved ones that doesn't mean you have to be overly caring towards them but if you feel they're still all right to be in your life this is the time or this is the week to actually look at them and acknowledge them right so you are the builder of bridges which also means that you are a spiritual healer and people will find you which also makes sense because as i say every week oftentimes we have a pattern we see in the overall energy that, that the energy needs to be high and it is already reflected in the first star sign of the week pisces because when you are a spiritual healer and your energy is low people will find you if that makes sense you attract on your energy and people who do need a little bit of healing find you because you have a healing energy so it is important that your energy our energy pisces energy is really high the good thing is you have the snake which is the animal of protection is also the animal of healing as you uh, uh, probably recall when you go to the pharmacy you see a snake around the cane uh, it's an old um, greek symbol and also snakes are here to shed their skins <coughs> so this week is a really good week um, to look at new ideas that come in um, you don't have to be analytical because snakes do not have a frontal lobe if that makes sense so overthinking will not serve us Pisces this week at all just go with the flow but also realize that despite the fact that you are helping people that really still need to be in your life um, people that have run their course can go this week because shedding the skin means letting go of things that are no longer working and it will be very clear uh, to you and to us who this actually is okay okay so we have the beaver beaver is the number six as thomas said six is the healing number okay so a lot of people are going to be needing healing this month this week sorry um six also relates to uh stability and having a plan in action so it's important that you you know you you set a plan and you work towards that plan this week um the snake is the number 12 so 12 is a three which means three is trinity balance and three is also fun so um, make sure you're not working too hard and you're balancing that out with with a lot of fun and you know light-heartedness at the same time if all you're doing is working and building on things and not having any fun the energy is going to be blocked and things aren't going to be moving very freely for you yeah. it's, it's probably interesting that you mentioned this because um pisces is a very emotional star yes. sign and when you are emotionally affected mm -hmm. Uh, you're not asking in for fun. Um, I've been playing air guitar for the last 30 years and it's just so much so much fun. I just do this every day in five minutes. Yeah. And so, so one day I have, I have erasure, the other day I go into more, more the head kind of thing. So I'm, I'm not um, too um, focused on what I play. Yeah. But um, remember, when your energy is higher and you, and you actually create space and be silly, um, your energy stays high for quite some time. So it's quite important, right? So that concludes Pisces for now. I just want to put the cards in Also there. with Pisces, the beaver builds dams and Pisces is the um, element of water, which is emotion. So um, don't hold your emotions back. Don't, don't block your emotions. If you need to say things, please come out and say it to people. That's going to help things move forward a little bit for you. Okie dokie. And now we're going into Aries. Let's see where we are. I have a real problem. I'm actually super hungry. I just <laughs> noticed this right now. But um, I'm going to be professional. We're going to do the two-parter. <laughs> and then we have a look. For Aries this week, it's super important to look at your home. Um, you have the TP and the woodpecker. And the TP is basically where you live. It's not necessarily only about the people that you live with. But you have to have an overall look if the foundation of your home are still protected if they are fully working or if there is something a bit off you have the woodpecker and the woodpecker is one of the few birds uh, together with the kingfisher and the hummingbird that can work any tree no matter how crooked the tree is and the tree represents your life so no matter how crooked your life is how difficult your life feels because you have the woodpecker you will get through it just fine this week but it is your job aries to look at your home and pay attention to the things that are out of sync, if that makes sense. Nice here, uh, this depiction is um, interesting because it has a little crystal on top of the woodpecker. 
So um, being aided by crystals are really important. Um, the, the crystal that, that is shown here is a blue agate. So it's about speaking the truth because of the color blue, uh, re re referring to the throat chakra. Um, so you, it's also good because you can speak your truth this week because you're not going to do this aggressively. Um, you are basically the person that pulls the brakes and goes like, let's have a look at what's going on here. And that's all you need to do. And you can do it calmly, quietly, but um, with, uh, with affection and with devotion to the cause of making home perfect and safe again. Okay, so we have the TP, that's a 21-3. Again, that's Trinity Balance. So it's important to maybe try and feng shui your home this week. Um, the number eight, that relates to finances. So be careful that there's not any imbalance with finances at the moment. Um, it could be related to the home. Um, some of you may be having problems paying rent or affording the things that, that you want to, want to bring into your home. So new new pictures, crystals, anything. Um, I think that finances are a little bit of a problem at the moment. But as the woodpecker, he pecks away at things. Okay, so don't, don't give up, keep going. Uh, and you'll find that those things do come into you, but you must meditate as we have the three here. Mm -hmm. And on top of the woodpecker is, is a crystal, um, which is bringing in divine knowledge through the crown chakra. Okay, so it's very important that you meditate. Yeah. And, like and remember, we have a full moon this week. So there's no better day, really in the 2nd of March where we have a full moon because when you actually meditate and manifest and journey uh -huh. doing the full moon energy, um, it is lots of times higher than normal energy would be. So you manifest quicker yes. and, and, and mm -hmm. answers and solutions will come to you much faster. So it's not a myth, the, 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 the moon affects everybody, so you might as well work with it, yeah. if that makes sense, right? So that was Aries going into Taurus. Mm -hmm. Taurus is always interesting because my sister and my father are both Tauruses and, and they can be their own worst enemy. We have had this numerous times here and I always sort of uh, um, call my sister after the review. She doesn't speak English, so sort of sending her the video doesn't quite work. And I tell her to, what, what to watch out for. And even when I tell her kindly, she objects. <laughs> it's one of those things, you know, unfortunately. So I'm looking forward to seeing um, how much... Tauruses are their own enemy this week um, because sometimes it is your inability to actually go past things initially that have caused some issues. But uh, for Tauruses this week, it's actually quite good. You have the sturgeon and the crow, and that's actually both of them are actually good, good um, animal deities. The sturgeon is a, is, is, is a fish that doesn't have to swim with or against the, the stream or the tide, it can go like this in the water. So you get to the bottom of things very easily this week. There's not much to worry about. People will not lie to you. If they do, you will, you will spot it a mile away. And what is important for Tauruses this week is, is this. You have the crow. And the crow is the animal of transformation and change. What that means is that all changes that are already in the making and that will come to you this week will be life-changing. They're not single easy changes. They're not like, let, let's just change this tire and go on holidays. You know, what they're saying to you is, is that no matter how difficult or easy the change will feel, remember and realize that change is needed. I say that every week, change is the only constant in the universe. But for Taurus this week, it is the main topic, is to look at change and allow it to happen. Don't fight it, don't block it. Okay. Uh, with a nine on the Sturgeon card, lots of completion coming through for Tauruses this week. Um, right, nine is endings. Also, nines don't trust people very much. Okay, so if you're having any trust issues with people, try and get to the bottom of, of reasons why these trust issues are happening. The crow is an 11, as we know, the crow is very clever. Um, and 11 is the first master number of awakening. So this is showing me some completion surrounding emotional matters and then you're going to be free to move on to something new um you'll be feeling a lot lighter um everything looks like it's it's going to be moving forward for you this week yeah and i, and I often look at the depictions because obviously it's done by an artist and like any artist things will come to them at the moment that they're drawing this and the crow here doesn't sit on a branch he sits on a staff and that makes a big difference because the staff is about moving forward while the branch is about resting yeah. So it's important uh, to realize that these changes this week will actually allow you to move forward. So it's actually quite positive. 
Um, to be honest, I think it's going to be around relationships because 11 and 9 is a 20, which is a 2, which relates to partnerships. And 11 is the soulmate number also. So if you've got someone hanging on to you that you know isn't, is, isn't serving you, get rid of them because someone else is trying to come in for you, okay? It's important that you do that. Awesome. So that was Taurus going into Gemini. Still hungry? <laughs> <laughs> I tried not I'm to think about hungry. it. Yeah, so <laughs> so let's have a look. Gemini, you have to take things really easy this week because you have the medicine wheel and the deer. And that means that you need to pace yourself right. The medicine wheel does not denote that you are ill or that you will get illnesses or anything. It just means that you have to make sure that you're not running out of steam and that you pace yourself right. The medicine wheel on, in this depiction is actually intact, which means when you, when you look after yourself, you will be fine. But you have the deer, and the deer only functions best at sunrise and sunset. Where you lose a lot of strength this week is when people are able to chase you during the day. So if you work in a high maintenance job, for instance, where you have to um, work towards a lot of deadlines, it would be good to call in sick <laughs> <laughs> or, or take a few days off. Yeah. You know, there, you, know you, have, you have chosen this job, if that makes sense, and you know what is entailed. But the energy this week is, is about resting paying attention um, and, and moving slowly and in a pace that allows you to breathe. And if your workload doesn't allow you to breathe, then you need to somehow acknowledge that. And the easiest way is to take a few days off, if that makes sense, right? So for Pisces, um, I can see a lot of, of spiritual transformation going on in these cards. We have a 27-9. Uh, 9 is endings and completion, as I say, but it's also the spiritual healing number. Two is harmony and seven relates to the spirit. Okay, so if you're feeling a little bit low or your energy is very depleted, it's a really good idea for you to be meditating. Okay, the deer again that's a seven which relates to the spirit, so lots of harmony needs to be, um, needs to be created this week. Um, don't push yourself too hard, otherwise, you're going to be feeling very depleted. Also, I feel like Gemini they may be having a few problems sleeping this week, mm. so if that's the case. Meditation is very essential. And also, you have the number seven numerous times, if you, yeah. if you look at it individually. And seven is the number of, of uh, super protection. You probably recall that on, on some of the videos that I, that I do, I do the St. Michael grid. And it says, uh, I ask you to comfort me and to protect me from the left to the right, back, front, center. So in the, in, in the end, there's seven ways of protecting your whole system. Um, and it is important this week to stay protected, which also makes sense because it is depicted in the medicine wheel. And what I like about this is that, which is oftentimes the case, is that the numbers relate directly to the imagery. Yes. So you get to, in, in inverted brackets the same thing because yeah. that it makes obviously sense if it's not too difficult and too different. Um, because it, it just confirms that there's always more than one way to get to the bottom of situations. It. And it's, so it's quite, it's quite interesting. Very, very spiritually based for Gemini this week. Yeah, and also this this uh, deer depiction here is a male one, which means it has antlers. And every time you have an animal with antlers, it means you're actually fully protected. So call in sick, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or or take a few days off. I just feel strongly that that the more you you allow stress mm -hmm. to be part of your day to day activity, the harder it is to shake it off. It is. And so yeah. it's important to sort of you know um. Do something about it, if that makes sense. Of right? course, we work to live, we don't live to work, okay? Also Absolutely. Remember that. Yeah. So yeah, lots of spiritual nourishment going on this week. Yeah. Okay, that, that was Gemini. Okay. Moving into Cancerians. Cancer. Oops, card fell out. Oh, two cards fell out. Okay. So when cards fall out, it means they want to be read, and they gave us two cards already. For um, Cancerians this week, you have the Twin Gods and the Otter. The otter is holding hands, so nobody drifts off, and the twin gods means that you're not alone in this. Um, what is important in, um, in the relation to these, of these two cards is to not hold on to things that your soul knows aren't working. Just because you have the twin gods and they're trying to keep things together does not mean it is healthy. Because the otter is a water animal and water is space. So let's just say if this is about relationships and you're trying to hold on, it's not necessarily wrong. But it would mean that in this relationship that you are trying to hold on to, um, you need a lot of space and me time. Okay. 
and it's important to just um, make sure that the reality is is that you speak your truth, because that's what what when you have the word gods here, um, they're all about speaking the truth even if it is uncomfortable. Um, so that that's important. Okay, so the god the twin gods is a, is a number nineteen. Nineteen is the karmic debt of leadership abuse in a previous lifetime, and also misuse of sacred knowledge for your own personal gain. Um, when it comes up with a three. Added together is a 22-4, the master builder number. I feel like um, some of you are in controlling situations at the moment. You're not voicing your opinions enough and you're letting other people control you. Okay, three is the number of fun and trinity balance. And that's polar opposite to number 19. Okay, so to get this trinity balance in, you've got to stand up for yourself, start speaking your truths. And start putting your foot down a little bit, actually. With 91, you might find people karmically control you. Um, if that's not the case, then you're very stubborn. Um, <laughs> try not to be be that way this week and yeah, have yeah, more fun, yeah, okay? Yeah. Absolutely. So we're going into uh, Leo, which is the, the last star sign for uh, part one. I had actually planned, because that's that's how weird I am, I actually wanted to color code this video. <laughs> I have a black and white shirt, and I thought I'm going to wear it for the first part, and then a yellow and black shirt for the second part. Then I was like, nah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> right? But I, I wanted to actually color code this. But then I thought, like, this is probably will get lost yeah. on people easily, right? So let's go into Leo okay. and see where we're going with this. So my personal favourite's Leo. Okay, uh, is this your star sign? No, I'm a Capricorn. I'm a Leo oh, okay. rising though. Oh, okay, right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, it's the second star sign that talks about, um, you know, we had, we had earlier a star sign where we looked at the teepee, your home, and it is the same energy than looking at your family. You have the great spirit and the totem. The totem means family. It means mostly flesh and blood family or people that are so close that you consider them family. And you have the great spirit, which means there are difficult times ahead to figure out where relationships that are close to you are actually going. Right? But you have the great spirit and the great spirit is all about wisdom. In other words, inside your soul, especially around your heart chakra and around the sternum where rejection sits, you already know the answer. It is just important that this week you actually um, act on it. And remember, it's perfect because we have a, a quite a high week because we're moving into March and have a, um, a full moon on the 2nd. So it might not get better than this, energetically speaking. So, so this is the time to realize something needs to be done about this and say it. Right? Okay, so the Great Spirit is the number 17. 17 is actually the number of God. Uh, so it's important to call in divine beings to help you along your path at the moment. This can also mean that you're trying to take off in money matters in some way. Um, the totem is a 31-4, so that will come through. Okay, but you have to ask the divine to bring that through for you. Um, and they're kind of willing to willing to provide you with this energy, so make sure you ask for it this month, Cancer. Okay, yeah. Leo. Leo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all good. So um, it's also important to realize uh, just what you what you just said is that these are your guides, yeah. and they're here for you, not against you. And it is usually a mistake not to ask for guidance because they are guides, yeah. hence, the, hence the name. And a lot of people, um, no matter how spiritual they are, they always go it alone. And it's important not to, because these guys got your back. So, so who better to ask than, than beings that have, been, have, that have been with you yeah. for many lifetimes? You right? have to realize as well, these, they, your guides can't help you unless you request it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It's the law of free will. Absolutely, because they, they will never override free will. Um, so it makes sense. And sometimes you cannot be guided either when you block. Right? And, and Leo, my son is Leo, love him dearly. But Leo can be quite stubborn at times and over, overstep their boundaries because at times they feel invincible when they're in their strong zone, oh, I can do everything <laughs> and anything. It's important to, to not make that mistake and, and bring in ego, right? Also the 17, 17 is an eight, obviously Leo is, is the month of August, so this is a lot of money and freedom coming in for you here, okay? You just have to believe it and ask for it, that's very important. Yeah. Okie dokie, so I'm going to switch this off and then we're moving into the second part with the same shirt. <laughs> <laughs>